Oh, is it? Okay, like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you a gift. I appreciate that, bro. And this is um from one of our companies that we're launching soon, Anaya Body. So essentially, what it What's is. What's it called? Sorry, Anaya Body. Anaya Body. Anaya Body. Yeah. So, so open it up. Yeah, of course you yeah. can. I so essentially, that. what it is is um, organic oils. Yeah. From very special parts of the world. So we got raw ship oil. We got raw ship oil. Argan oil. Argan oil. We got jojoba oil, but that finished. I couldn't bring that for you. Sick, mashallah. So it's imported from Venezuela, Peru. Um, countries of such so the reason why I, met, I brought it up here is because there's actually that's nice bottles work actually yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so what is your brand yeah th- these are these are pro- no this is my brand yeah my friend's brand my other friend's brand and my other friend's brand so you're all involved in it and my friend launched this whilst being in jail oh is it so he's in jail right now my friend yeah so yeah, we're yeah. doing the marketing the packaging is this the one I met at your event yes okay yes okay shout he out to him. him so he's on he's on DCAT so he comes out of jail uh, five days every month so I'm going to put this here so people can see it throughout the whole podcast so yeah so it's like it's not it's not just about you know being successful it's about not, not letting your circumstances contain you yeah he's in jail he could have easily said yeah that's it I'm in jail I'm gonna <laughs> that's fine <laughs> I was gonna say yeah <laughs> what would you brush your oil on <laughs> yeah so he's in jail he could have easily said these are my circumstances and mm. that's it I'm gonna be here for a very long time I'm gonna start my life when I come out he said no so obviously, um, he had the idea, kickstarted it, and I'm just here to give it an extra kick. Inshallah, bro. Do you know? I, I think I even remember saying to him, "Keep cracking on what he's doing, put it, keeping his head down as yeah. well." Because I know in DCAT, I've got a couple of mates in DCAT yeah. uh, across the country, and though they're trying to change their life, there's still people inside mm-hmm. who not want to drag them down, but they're yeah. still in that environment at the end of the day. Because when they come out for those five days every single month, however, however it may be, due to your behaviour. They're going back to sitting with those same guys that got them here in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro, I know a couple of guys who used to go out. I don't even know if I should say this on a podcast, but this is, who was it? Up in Manchester. Um, I can't say who it was, but he used to come out on DCAT and on his days out on DCAT, they used to do the maddest robberies ever. They never got caught, but he was never, at the time, on fixing his life like that. Uh-huh. So he was still doing the same thing. He just thought, okay, cool, I need some bread. I need all that. Let's come out of DCAT. Let's do a robbery. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Steal yeah. a couple of cars, whatever. All yeah. that sort of stuff. So the fact that this is why I rate people who are yeah. in DCAT and fully trying to actually change their Absolutely. lives and stuff like that. I mean, if, if you pa- pass me the rose, let me, let, me, let me show you guys something. Look, guys, this is, this is uh, this initiative was started from from gel. You can see, yeah? Anaya, organic body, uh, organic body oil. Ingredients, 100% organic, rosa canina, rose hip, seed oil. It tells you the directions. Like, look, Look at the packaging, guys. Barcodes, everything's proper, licensed. Okay, regulation on the way. Right now, we're gonna we're gonna do a soft launch soon. Mm-hmm. Inshallah. But it's um, uh, we're still cooking up. Like these are just prototypes right now. So what's this oil actually for? Like hair oil, body oil, f- stretch marks, body oil, okay. hair oil. We have got beard oil. Yeah. Like a lot, a lot, a lot's coming as you can see. Uh, very quality packaging. So yeah, it's it's a bit, bit on on your road to success, and when you're at that stage to wanting to become an entrepreneur, you have to understand that. Sometimes all you have to do is aid the ideas of people around you. Well, this was, I was going to come to your trading talk in a second, but I mean, this is just a prime example of the fact that you being in a space and starting off as a trader and yeah. then diversifying and building different aspects of wealth, this yeah. being one of them, not necessarily having to launch and start a business from the idea of yourself and everything, but just yeah. the fact that you have people around you. Once you get in that network of people, there's always opportunities to invest, always opportunities to do new things. And I suppose this is, an example to the Absolutely. audience of one of them sort of things. Yeah, like I've, I've, I'm not gonna list all the things, but alhamdulillah, like I've uh, diversified pretty well. Like this is just one of the ideas. This mm-hmm. hasn't kicked off yet, but my biggest income isn't trading or selling my course. No, mm. like my biggest income is I'm not gonna mention it now, but I'm, I'm involved in a lot of things. I've got like a, I'm currently developing an app, two apps, mm-hmm. sorry, an app and and, and a new online uh, website. Um, I've, I've 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 put my foot into the gold import export world. Private investments. Mm-hmm. Um, the app. Can we say what industry it's in? Like, what does it help with or anything? It. It. There's two. Mm-hmm. One helps with mental health. It's a mental health and wellness app, mm-hmm. and the other is a sort of networking app that I can't speak on it because someone will steal the idea. Okay. Yeah. But it's it's gonna. If I'm, it's gonna be. Oh, let me let me show you the logo one second. Go on. Just from the logo. Um, if I had to guess, assume. Uh, if I had to assume, 
helping people connect with other people or not just that no like it's just, okay if you can just, just take a look at it yeah yeah i see it i see it didn't you speak about this briefly on you didn't you didn't speak about it but i think you you mentioned the same sort of thing that you're working on this project or yeah like i may have alluded to it yeah, yeah yeah but yeah so i feel like yeah even like with, with, with the rental fleet that's something I'm gonna be involved in in Dubai. Mm-hmm. So what uh, rent was car rentals? Yeah, that's a but why that one? Because the rentals I've always seen it as and funny enough, this Sunday coming out tomorrow, um, podcast with uh, Ahmed Amo, okay, yes, and he was even saying it as well. Like it's know, a headache, it's he- but that's headache, the thing. Bro. I'm not gonna be the guy handling the headache. So what, like I said, gonna be the investor or yeah, like like I, I'm gonna take the investors route, and I feel like this is the the way real wealth is. You know, generated. Of course, people look down on the on the role of a middleman until the middleman is making twenty percent, thirty percent drinks on ten different sort of fields that are already working. They're already up and running. You're just coming to add gasoline to the fire. Of course. Okay, so let's talk about this thing because this is the way the route to build generational wealth. Yeah, mm-hmm. constantly investing, analyzing risk, and all that sort of stuff. In this case here of the rentals, I'd say that the risk is very, very high. Um, so. Where do you get your whole risk analysis from or what makes a good opportunity a good opportunity for you? Shall I be completely honest with you? For me, I've looked at life as risk to reward. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me starting off with maybe three supercars, I see it as, okay, if this goes wrong, I would have at least accumulated some profits. And I'm not going to put myself in a detrimental position financially to put all of my finances into three supercars. Mm-hmm. If I'm doing that, it's going to be a, an amount that I'm more than willing to risk. Okay, an amount that wouldn't affect me if things were to go left. Mm-hmm. And obviously, with insurance in place, so on and so forth, it wouldn't really be that much of an issue unless you have some serious damages and the car is absolutely yeah. written off, it's, like driving yeah. a car through a flood in Dubai. And yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. Like I have, I have, I've got a friend who who did that. What in the supercar? In a, in a Lamborghini Urus. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to say his name and don't want to hold him up, but he was driving his car for, uh, he's in a Lamborghini Urus. He's driving his car. Through, through a flood and my friend told him Yo, was it his car or rental car it's his car okay yeah he said if the water goes in the engine the car's done yeah 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 so he said I can't he, he put the windows down he just full sent it oh the car just stopped yeah bro but then he go, get, he gets his driver his driver brings the G-Wagon he jumps from the window of the Eurus into the G-Wagon and drives off bro do you know what yeah when that's, else, that's, those are the kind of problems I want to have in life. It literally, but you know, just to touch on it as well, right there, you know the whole Dubai floods. When I see people driving out in their Cullens and Dawns and I saw a Pagani, I seen that one. Yeah, yeah. crossing the river. Yeah, bro, I'm thinking in my head, why are people doing this? Why mm. are people risking it? There's a guy I, f- I follow on Instagram. Yeah, hopefully going to do podcasts with him soon. So he's driving his Cullen through the floods. I'm thinking, oh, let's see where this goes. Next story, the whole car shut off, and I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't know why people would even risk it in the first place. But this is what I'm saying. God forbid, you know, you invest into a supercar or something mm-hmm. like that for a rental. The last thing you want to hear is, yo, Aki, yeah, cu- uh, car's written off. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's a hundred grand loss right there. Yeah, of course. So those, I'm saying, risky investments as well. Yeah, I feel like though, you you have to, they say real bosses take losses. You have to take the risk. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you've already, if you've cemented yourself, not cemented yourself, but if you've started a few ventures, you, you already understand risk. Mm-hmm. So you you kind of know what kind of field you're stepping into. If I know this car is worth this much, and I feel like in, in in business in general, whatever amount you put in, you have to look at it like, okay, I've lost this amount already, to remove that emotional attachment to whatever it is that you've started. Because if it goes wrong now, you don't want a part of your brain to say, yeah, but I thought this was guaranteed. No, this is business. There's a risk. There's a risk element in everything. The moment you accept the risk is the moment you'll see things from a business point of view. And I always say this regarding to trade regarding trading as well. I say to my uh, members, my students, and my community. I say, whenever you guys enter a trade, some of you are not content with the trade hitting your stop loss. You want to open a restaurant. If the restaurant isn't doing well, what would you blame it on? Maybe bad chef, bad interior design, very low light, it's dark. Um, timings of our openings aren't really the greatest. Okay. We say we open at 10, but we're always late. So customers don't have that loyalty towards us. Bad reviews on Trustpilot or Google. Um, you will blame anything and everything, but the fact that you would you would make excuses and not say, let me close down the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Obviously, after a certain amount of time, you have to 
look at yourself and analyze the situation, assess and say, okay, maybe this is not the field. Maybe this is just not meant to be. But why not make excuses every single time you lose a trade or the trade hits your stop loss? Because you, the reason why I mentioned the restaurant example or the business example, or you, you start any business. If I want to start a clothing line, I have to, you know, pay for the fabrics and I have to, before I even get my logo printed on it, I have to work out how much I'm going to get in bulk and shipping fees, so on yeah, and so forth. work out everything. Everything. Yeah. So in business, there's always a business expense. Money is going to have to come out of your pocket for the greater good. Yeah. Okay. To bring it to, to, to a more realistic example, let's say you're young, you're working at 95. You're getting on the bus. You tap your card on the bus. You're getting charged, what, £1.50, £2, whatever it may be now. Yeah? For what? What's the risk to reward? In life, you always have to think in terms of risk to reward. The risk is, okay, I'm risking £2 today to tap my Oyster card. The reward is what? £70 you may, may have got paid. You might have got paid £70 for working that shift. Mm-hmm. At the end of the week, you uh, you add everything up. Okay, two, four, six, eight, ten, five days of work. I spent ten pound on travel, getting on a bus. How much have I made? Seven times five. What's that? Three fifty. Yeah, so like that. Three hundred fifty pound. I made that week. Okay, that's a reward. But when it comes to trading, you want to enter a trade, the trade, go for a profit straight away, without accepting the fact that you're gonna need to have a business expense in trading, and the business expense is your stop loss getting hit, and you taking that loss it's just about how do you manage that loss and make sure the loss is small and not great 